Welcome to the Process Podcast. From new agent to broker owner. My name is Travis Lenore. This is my co-host, Preston Guyton. Welcome to the Process Podcast. This is Travis McClure. And today, I have a very special co-host. My my normal co-host, Preston. Preston Guyton, he's on vacation this week. So I have Ray Copeland joining us today from New Bern, North Carolina. Ray, say hello, sir. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm glad to be here, man. So Ray is uh, newly joined Palms in the last month or so. He, for us, is what we call a lead office agent up in the New Bern area. Uh, for us, it's kind of a team lead over an area that our, our company grows to. And uh, I've gotten to know Ray. He and I do a leadership call every single week to kind of talk about his business, talk about the New Bern business, and um, actually thought he would be a great guest to come on and talk to us a little bit, obviously about himself, but talk to us a little bit about the coastal North Carolina real estate market, like what he's seeing. But Ray, start out, man. Tell us, tell us about you. Tell us who you are, what's your real estate story, all that good stuff. Yeah, no. So uh, 34 years old. Getting old, uh, you know, <laughs> and um, uh, I'm married to my beautiful wife, Laura Lynn. Um, I have uh, three uh, beautiful children. I have two boys and one girl, uh, Gavin, Grant, and Gabby. They are five, four, and two. So, other than uh, besides real estate, I am also kept busy uh, in the household as well. And um, yeah, so that that's a little bit about me. I, I got into real estate uh last year I actually got my license in August of 2021 uh before that I was in the corporate world so I was actually in uh call center management contact center management um I I had been with a, a company uh here in North Carolina for about 7 years and um you know I started out as a supervisor and then I worked my way up into uh, uh the management um, you know, part of that, that, uh, contact center. And it was really good. I, I learned a lot. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you're taking calls, taking escalated calls, you know, talking with the upset customers. And then from the management side, uh, you know, you're dealing with the team and, you know, and de dealing with, you know, just the team of supervisors, which is really good, but I, I'll be honest with you. I, uh, I wanted more. Um, and so I, I was actually already planning on getting my real estate license, um, and so I wanted to start out part time and just uh, some, some things worked, some things worked out the, the way they did. And I was able to, to jump in full time real estate in November of 2021. And it's been off to the races since then. Yeah. You know what I love about your story, Ray, and, and doing what I do for the years I've done it. You hear it over and over again. People who had careers prior to real estate that those skill sets transfer right into having a successful real estate business. Like you talk about just being able to de-escalate situations or um, just even doing what you're doing now. You've led teams before, right? Just having that leadership ability um, yeah. that transfers into making you successful today. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Talk about your journey. I think also is pretty unique. Um, you started off as a new agent, had a yeah. ton of success very quickly. What advice would you give to somebody in those shoes right now? Brand new, I'm brand new agent. This is my first week or first two weeks jumping into the business. What advice would you give that person? Yeah. So, so the advice that I would give, and I, I think we're all aware of it to a certain extent is that uh, one of the biggest problems I, I think in real estate, especially with new agents is what we all call shiny object syndrome. You, you come into real estate and you, as soon as you change your uh, job title on Facebook and start searching for real estate stuff online, you start to get bombarded with Facebook ads of, Hey, buy this course, buy that course, buy this, this is the best way. Yeah. Um, but you know, ultimately you, you got to drown out all that noise and and you just gotta, you, you know, you gotta do the things that actually, um, you know, will, uh, you know, you know, actually get uh, actionable steps and um, that will get things actually rolling, you know, like, generate consistent lead flow and actually just having the proper tech stack in place. What I mean by that is just the CRM, uh, you know, you need, yeah. you need to generate lead flow and you need to have a CRM to be able to handle the leads as they come in. Uh, don't mix, do not mix your real estate business, uh, you know, contacts with your personal contacts on your phone. I, I can't imagine how anyone can actually live life like that. 
Um, and just pick up the phone and call. You, you have to call the leads and, and you just need to, to just be consistent at it every day. And so that's what I did when I came in. I, you know, I did a little, I did a little research on my own and I just uh, was basically looking at what some of the top teams were doing and every single top team, what they had in common was they were generating their own leads mm -hmm. and then they had a proper tech stack or they had a proper uh, CRM in place uh, to be able to handle the leads as they came in. And so, and then at that point, it's uh, you're not done. Uh, you're just getting started. Obviously as the leads come in, you have to, you have to start following up with them and you got to, whether that's through a combination of in-person follow-up or, you know, uh, uh, there's an automation side to it as well. That way you can continue to try to cultivate and stay on top of them. And that was pretty much, and then other than that cold calling, um, that was, that was, that was pretty much the, the only things that I recommend is so if, you're a new agent and you don't have money because a lot of agents that come in, they don't have any money right. to be able to pour into leads. So then I would recommend, honestly, if you're a brand new agent and you don't have any of the funds to, to generate your consistent lead flow, you know, you need, really need to actually look out and see what type of real estate teams are out there and what they have to offer, because there, there are some bad real estate teams and there are some good real estate teams and you need to actually sit down and yes, they'll interview you, but you can also interview them and ask good questions and you need to see what they can offer. And so if, if they can generate consistent lead flow and if they can provide the proper tools for you to follow up with these leads and so that way you can start converting and making business happen, then that'd be a good first step. So I think that's the way to go. Uh, and then if obviously if you're an agent that doesn't want to, to be on a team at all, because there are agents out there like that and you got all the money in the world, hey, more power to you, you know, so set up your own little ecosystem and, uh, and get things rolling. But those would be the things that I would that would recommend. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, <clears throat> our market, usually we have a lot of transplanted people in Myrtle mm -hmm. Beach, right? So a lot of agents come here and they don't have a huge sphere of influence, right? Meaning like they don't have a huge database right here to call. And mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more. If you're in that situation, you're in a market like, hey, I want to get in real estate. I'm passionate about helping people. Like, you know, I'm personable. I have that skill set from another career where I could be successful. I think there there is an element of some things you have to look for. I couldn't agree more from a tech standpoint, CRM is, is Trump's all what CRM do they use? Research it. Is it easy to use? Do, do top mm -hmm. agents and top companies, are they using it? Um, what's the lead flow? Like I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, challenge that with agents, especially now there's a lot yeah. of companies that were getting leads from Zillow and realtor that don't anymore because either it got too expensive or mm -hmm. they, they even just got cut off. The amount of leads they were getting isn't the same. So what's where where are the leads coming from? Is there a consistent flow? And I think another one, especially for transplanted agents, Ray, is does that company have a database that you can call, right? Yeah. Whether mm -hmm. it be like, I, I know Red X, and if you're not familiar with Red X, that's where you can cold call, right? You can get numbers, mm -hmm. um, homes, and you can call around just listed, just sold properties. I did a lot of that early in my career, and that's a great way to build a real estate business for not a lot of money. It's like 50 bucks a month. Well, you're making straight up cold calls at that point. Or does the company have a database, meaning like people paid to, to or gave their information to sign up for their website? Is there a database of people that you can pull up and call from, right? Otherwise, if you don't have a very big sphere where you live and you're not, you know, a skilled cold caller, who are you going to call to build your business? And I think those are questions you have to ask yourself. Absolutely. What are your on that, Ray? No, yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. You know, I, I think you uh, you echoed everything I said and you added more, you know, especially uh, a, a big one that I didn't say was, uh, you know, check and see if that brokerage has an existing database to where you can immediately uh, jump in and, and, and get into their, their CRM. And, you know, typically they call them pawns and, yeah. you know, how many leads they got in that. And, you know, you can start or start calling. You know, that's, that's, that's like we, we were talking before we started this, you know, the, you know, when it's all said and done, no matter what uh, lead source you're paying, no matter what type of content generation you're doing to, to get leads, even if you're paying for leads or getting the leads for free, they all have one thing in common. And that's, you got to pick up the phone and call them. Yeah. I mean, and I think there's a lot of agents just on, honestly, at the end of the day, when you pull the curtains back, when it's all said and done the, you know, so many times you'll see agents pay for leads, but when it gets to the point where they have to actually call and talk on the phone, they just don't want to, or they're scared to talk on the phone. And honestly, the, I would say that there's probably a lot of things in real estate that people say, uh, we know you need this to be successful. Well, and then sometimes it's not true, but 
the one thing that I, I I do not think that you can uh, compromise on is if you just don't want to talk to someone on the phone, it's going to be a tough business. It really is. You know, I was talking to somebody recently who's a friend of mine. They're, they're in the process of getting their license and they were picking my brain a little bit about like, Hey, what's it take to be successful? I see a lot of people work in real estate and I always have the conversation. I was like, well, you know, 10% of the agents do 90% of the business. And here's why, you know, for those reasons you just said, and I was like, you know, you, you have to make proactive contact, you know, whether it be even mm-hmm. all these agents you see on social media. Yes. Is that a lead generation source for some agents out there? Absolutely. But they're making a ton of content to make pro or, or they're direct messaging people or they're commenting on people's posts or liking posts. They're doing some sort of proactive uh, contact with people. They're not just sitting back waiting for people to message them. Um, you know, you have to pick that lead source that's great for you. Obviously, getting on the phone and calling, like I talked about, making the the straight up cold calls through Red X, that's mm-hmm. a way. It's not the way, but it's a way. I think calling from a database where people registered to be in, that's not a cold call to me. That's to me what's a no. little bit different about, it, especially for agents right. that are a little bit scared. And that's why agents here have a lot of success making calls. And we'll see the same thing up in New Bern. Obviously, we've built that that Coastal Carolina pool up there but they'll have a lot of success calling because those people registered for a website. They gave their information so they could have right. pro- information about a property or information about a home search. They're essentially waiting for someone to call them, right? They, they, they've asked for a call or asked for more information. At that point, you're providing a service and in, in, in providing that service, you're going to build relationships with people. And that's the name of the game. That's what Ray has done so successfully. Yeah. And, and just to echo one more thing, you know, I've been in the call center industry for seven years. I <laughs> I have spoke to my fair share of uh, angry customers. Uh, you know, it was about uh, it was it was in the home appliance industry. So, um, gosh, I could sit here and tell you stories about some of my calls, but we ain't got time for that. But I, I can let you know, you know, being in real estate for not even a uh, almost a year, almost a year now, uh, approaching a year that I, I looking back and I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of calls, and I can only think of one call in real estate where the, where the caller was just nasty or mean. Yeah. And so, you know, I just think that should, that should, uh, you know, kind of ease everyone's uh, fears of picking up that, that phone. And and uh, if you can get over the fear of picking up that a hundred pound phone, <laughs> uh, your, your, uh, your, your journey in real estate will be so much easier. You, you know, the way I always uh, pose it to new agents, especially you know, like we have our agent excellence class here, right? And it's a lot of people newer to real estate. They'll come through the class. And uh, Trip Love does a great job teaching that class, but I'll go in and talk to him from time to time. And we talk about making calls. And I always tell, I always ask the question in front of the class, right? I'll say, you know, what's the best thing that could happen from you making? Because they're getting ready to go out and make calls for the first time, right? I say, what's the best thing that could happen from making these calls today? Someone always will raise their hand and be like, well, someone will want to buy a house, right? I was like, all right, yeah, someone will want to buy a house in 90 days. That's going to be a closing, right? That's, $9,000, $10,000, $12,000 Nine thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars potentially in your pocket in ninety days, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. That's a great outcome in ninety days for making these calls. Then I then I flip it around. I say, what's the worst, absolute worst thing that could happen in making these calls? Well, someone gets mad and hangs up on me, or someone curses at me, or this or that. I was like, all right. In ninety days, does that affect your life at all? In ninety seconds, oh. it really shouldn't even affect your life. You think that person that got upset, they're even mad about it ninety seconds from now that someone called them about a house for sale in their neighborhood or whatever? No, Mm-mm. right. In 90 days, that will not affect your life. That bad phone call in, in honestly, in three hours, you shouldn't even be thinking about it, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe in 90 seconds, you'll think about, Hey, I could have done this a little bit better, but in 90 days, the good far outweighs the bad from that phone call. And even the bad, that's how I tell them. Like the, the thing you think was bad is actually a good thing too, because it's just going to make you a better caller, right? You're Correct. doing reps to get better. Absolutely. So I couldn't agree with you more. Ray, let's jump into trends right now. What well, obviously real estate market's gotten weird, right? Over the last weird. that's all I'll say. It because yeah. you know what I mean? I feel like it's really a tale of, of of two businesses or a tale of two agents, whatever you want to say. Like I know from talking to agents in this market and in our office, there's agents doing really well, right? And they're ones taking that take taking action. And there's some agents who, you know, they're they're struggling, right? That maybe their pillar of business they got used to just isn't isn't great. You hear lots of different things about the economy, right? Mm-hmm. And things like and interest rates and all that kind of stuff. So the real estate market is definitely different. What are you seeing 
up in your area of New Bern, coastal Carolina, coastal North Carolina. What challenges are you having in the real estate market up there right now? Yeah, well, first of all, it's it's um yes, the real estate market has been just insane, insane. And so, you know, and I I'm not I'm not um, uh, naive to the fact that when I came in, I came I came in at a very uh I came in at a very beautiful time. <laughs> you know, it was it was, um, you know, all fairy tales and candy land and, uh, you know, buyers were everywhere. The only problem was then, even then, though, um, that the inventory was still low. And, right. you know, and especially here in eastern North Carolina, and inventory is even still lower. And so that's that's what we're seeing. So we, we still have low inventory um, over the past, obviously, six months, obviously, with with interest rates going up in combination with the impact that inflation is having um you know obviously it's the affordability of some buyers has pulled back so we are especially here in eastern north carolina we are not seeing um you know uh that hungry pull of buyers like it was let's say like in you know january and february because it was just insanity. I mean, there was just buyers everywhere. It's like blood in the water. And, uh, you know, uh, a, a listing, a, a good, decent single family residence comes on the market. January, February, five, six offers at least on every property. I mean, it was just uh, a free for all. We're not really seeing that right now. I mean, occasionally, every now and then, I'll talk to some of my other real estate, uh, you know, uh, friends around here. And occasionally, you'll get a good property, have one or two offers on it, three offers. But other than that, we're starting to see properties, you know, sit on the market longer um, than they were compared to three, four months ago. Um, and maybe they only get one offer and it's for asking price. Um, and I'm starting to hear, um, you know, some buyers offer a little below asking price. And right. so I think it's starting to stabilize a little bit uh, with in regards to interest rates. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what we all need to understand is that interest rates are pretty much back where they were before COVID happened. And right. so I, I know everyone wants to freak out about interest rates, but I tend to try, especially when I'm talking to my my buyer clients and they're, they're you know, look, look all, all buyers are hearing is uh, recession, interest rates, crash. And so those are the questions they want answered. Like, you know, they, they, they have to move or, you know, there's something going on in their life that's they, that they really need to move here to Eastern North Carolina. And these are the things that they're worried about. So as agents, these are the things we should be discussing and we yeah. should be talking about and giving them the facts that, Hey, listen, yes, interest rates are five, five and a half, almost 6%. Just understand something. This is, these are what the interest rates were before COVID happened. So just understand that we're in, in some ways we're back to normal pre-pandemic uh, from where we were. So just understand that, yes, interest rates are a little higher. Affordability is going to be a little lower. You're not going to be able to buy that, you know, that $450,000 house, you know, with the same payment that you would have had if you would have bought a, you know, a $300,000 house. So, you know, so these are things that they're just going to have to look into. Um, but everything ultimately, like for instance, July, we know obviously we're in August now and we just finished up July a couple weeks ago and or almost two couple weeks ago. So everything is down from July of last year. I mean, uh, active listings were down about 10% in July uh, compared to last year. New listings, we were down. So get this. So inventory was even low last year. Right. And so, and so comparative of July of 2022 versus July of 2021, we were down in new listings 25%. So or even a uh, thinner market and, and then sold, even sold listings, which is, and this is the funny so, part too. So your we're inventory not, levels have dropped year to year? Like you have less that, inventory on the market now than you did then? July, comparative of July of 2021, comparative to July that just ended in this year. Yes, we, we and new listings were down 25%. Huh. Yeah, so it's a it's an even thinner market. Help, um, help me understand your market. What drives your market? Is it you have a lot of like military installations around you. Like what drives the market there? Is it transplants from the North? Like what? No, is it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a combination of military. Um, it's actually, I would say it's a lot of people think it's all military. It's actually not all military. I mean, it's a, I would say it's a, it's a good amount, but New Bern is a uh, very sought out after uh, retirement area. And, um, and so we, we get a lot of people relocating from the North, 
um, that are retiring and they, they want to be here in Eastern North Carolina. They want to be close to the beaches. They love New Bern. New Bern is a beautiful riverfront, uh, uh, a town and, um, you know, it's just a good place to not only retire, but it's also a good place to raise a family. And so I mean, we have a lot of good options for schools um, and just that, that being in a very good centralized location in Eastern North Carolina, you're in New Bern, but you're 45 minutes to an hour from the beach, you know, but if you want to go to a bigger city, you know, you can go, you can drive 45 minutes and you can hit Jacksonville or Greenville, uh, or you can go a little further, two hours and you're in Wilmington or Raleigh. But then you don't gotta you don't gotta stay there. You go have your fun, and you get to come back to that, to that uh, kind of like that that small town uh, vibe. But there's a whole lot more to do here in New Bern than there was comparative, you know, even five seven years ago. So New Bern's growing, yeah. Um, and uh, you know it's a very exciting time. So I would say military, uh, just families relocating for jobs, and then just re retirement is what drives it. Gotcha. So you get a lot of people that either cash buyers or cash ish buyers like we have here because they sold the house up north at good or yeah. people that pretty much in a position where they have to buy because they're moving to the area for either military or some other type of career. Yeah, that's that's correct. And I, I, I even think with the when, when we were going through um, COVID, there was a lot of people moving. Um you know, I was just listening to another uh, a realtor speak in another city, and it's funny. If I'm not mistaken, they were in uh, Texas, mm -hmm. and they they were looking at the data. And you know, last year, I mean, realtors were just they had, I mean, they were like record breaking. I mean, you probably can attest to this. Some of the agents at Palms and Myrtle Beach, I mean, people had the best years they've ever had ever. I mean, it yeah. was just mind blowing. They shattered their records. Yeah, if and you uh, the, if you were a realtor in the Southeast, because you had the, the, I've heard it called the great migration of 2020. You had people leaving where they worked remote and didn't have to work, live in the big cities to work anymore. They could live wherever they wanted. You were in the Southeast. We, we experienced a great migration where a ton, mm -hmm. I mean, our population exploded here mm -hmm. like yours did as well yeah and you got a lot of people leaving their state that they were in for various reasons other than just normal relocation i mean just normal you know we're gonna move for something i mean i was listening to a, a realtor out of texas one of the bigger cities in texas and they were pulling the data and they had their best year last year but they also discovered that general relocation was down eight percent you're talking about like work relocation like yeah, like, like, packages. yeah, correct. Like just yeah. general, general relocation, like pre pandemic general relocation was down 8%, but they had their best year ever. So, you know, I think with, as we all know, what COVID did is it, 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 we, we were eventually going to get to this majority of this massive work from home shift. Yeah. This, this massive tech shift to where we can all be able to work from home and be able to live where we want to live. COVID just kind of fast forwarded all of that. Yeah, it did. You know, and so that's what we saw. We saw people saying, Oh my gosh, I get to keep I get to keep my dream job in this state, but I don't actually have to be in this state anymore. So I want to I want to move somewhere where uh taxes are, you know, 75% cheaper. Yeah. And, <laughs> and or or whatever it is, sunshine, or buy the warm sunshine nine months yeah. a year, you know, like, or, yeah, or, yeah. or buy the water and everything. So and then so I think that now that things are dying off with COVID and we're kind of coming back to some type of uh, normality. I think we're actually going to start seeing the normal relocation stuff pick back up again. I, and I, I truly think that's what's going to happen. And so we, we're, we're starting, I mean, even right now here in Eastern North Carolina, like with, with sold listings in July, even though I said all of the other stuff was down, we're pretty much the same in regards to sold July of last year, we sold 146 July of this year, we sold 142 here in New Bern, just New Bern. And yeah. so we're only down 2%. So, you know, I, I think, and even with the, with the, it's funny, you know, it's funny how these interest rates and the, the fed hikes the interest rates up a little bit. Well, the last time it happened, the, you know, housing interest rates, mortgage interest rates actually came down a little bit. So it's, it's funny how they play off of each other sometimes. So, you know, the past couple of weeks, we've seen an uptick in buyer activity of whether it's just, um, you know, you know, reaching out and inquiring about properties or scheduling showings in the past two weeks, two and a half weeks, we've seen an uptick in that activity. So I think it's going to continue. I, I, I personally don't think uh, home prices are going to fall. I mean, I technically they're actually still 
actually rising. List prices are actually rising a little bit or they're kind of staying the same. There's not a big drastic dropout in prices. So, and I think it's going to stay like that. But uh, other than that, just there's not a, uh, you know, three months ago, you put your home on the market. You can pretty much guarantee that it was under contract in two days. So we're not we're not seeing that. It's a little good. And I'm, I'm actually OK with that. I'm actually excited about that because three, four, five, six months ago, it was very frustrating for buyers. Yeah. I mean, they they, they were they they were very frustrated. I mean, they they just they were exhausted. They, they, you know, they are here. They are putting their offering on their fourth house because they lost the last three because they didn't put a, a you know, ungodly amount of due diligence money down. And it was just, but now it's actually starting to be where they can actually, buyers are able to take a breath of fresh air. I, I like it to where, and I'm hoping that, you know, as time things level out even more and that hopefully we get more inventory on the market uh, that, you know, it'll be, it'll be good for buyers. You know, I, they say, they say a healthy market is six months of six months of inventory right and so um we're nowhere near six months but we're i think we're trying to slowly get there i think we've been hovering around uh i think we've been hovering around a month and a half for the past few months or I mean, sometimes a month so that's yeah. that's kind of where we're at i think in some of the southeast markets like other uh realtor friends and partners you know preston and i talked to you had such pent-up buyer demand where like you said it was very frustrating to be a buyer a few months back where a lot of those buyers are still around. Maybe they chose to go rent and now like those leases are expiring and now they're kind of back out there and they're realizing, Hey, you know what? Like, yeah, interest rates have picked up a little bit, which you're not married to an interest rate, right? You can always remortgage. Like people right. realize that. Yep. And you know, I'm not pressured to make this decision and overpay for a house or get multiple offers and compete for a house. Like I can actually see three or four homes and make the best decision for my family. And I've shared this stat a couple of times. It's an NAR stat where uh, after 2020, after COVID, 60% of families or buyers that bought homes are in some way, shape, or form when surveyed, like not satisfied with the home they got because they made very rushed decisions. Mm -hmm. right? Like the backyard's not big enough or it doesn't have enough bathrooms or whatever it is. Not that the realtor did a bad job, but we talked with our agents a lot, Ray, about go back and make sure you're making really good contact with those past clients, especially from the past couple of years and ask the key questions like, Hey, how's everything going? How's the neighborhood? How are you liking the house? And just see how they're doing. Right. No, I can tell you story after story of agents making those types of calls in our office to past clients where it's like, you know what, this how the yard isn't big enough. We actually want to go look at some other stuff. And next thing you know, they've they're listing their, their house now because they've gained a, a bunch of equity in it. Right. They've gained a ton of equity over the past few months and they're finding that house that better fits their family's needs. We see it a lot here, especially because people transplant, made quick decisions. They know they want to be in Myrtle Beach, but Myrtle Beach is very diverse in the different communities and areas and stuff like that. And they're just not in the right area of Myrtle Beach they want to be in. We have that happen a ton here. So then they sell this house and they kind of figure out where else they want to be. So to me, if you're an agent, we talk about making calls. That's a call you have to make. If you have a ton of past clients from the past two years, past three years, whatever, go back and make those calls and just check in on them. See how they're liking the house, see how they're liking the neighborhood. But good perspective, Ray, in uh, yeah. the old, uh, North Carolina market. I know New Bern's new for me. Before I met Ray, I'd actually never even heard of New Bern. I knew coastal North Carolina, but I had to actually like Google where New Bern, North Carolina was. And I've enjoyed talking to Ray and learning more and more about New Bern and uh, the community that it yeah. is. You know, you know, Travis. You know, you know, Pepsi was created in New Bern, right? I did actually. Josh, uh, our broker in charge in the office oh. here, um, he filled me in on that fact. Pepsi, Pepsi was born in New Bern. Yeah, and yeah. Then, that's that's pretty much our only claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tell me what's what's a a book you would recommend uh, to somebody either starting out or I always love to learn and read. What's a book you would recommend to somebody that influenced you as a salesperson? Yeah. Yeah. And it, well, it's actually one that I've, I'm actually not all the way done with it, but I, I've been in it and reading it is uh, too nice for sales uh, by Barry Jenkins. Um, it's, it's just a, a practical guide to ethical lead conversion. And um, I'm already hooked already, you know, in the first couple chapters, um, it just, it's just a different approach of, of, of how to have that those conversations with buyers and sellers uh, in a, in a very ethical way, um, because you know as you know Travis, it's pretty much it's it's pr all about listening. 
I mean, it's just, you, you just, uh, just, if, if your buyer or seller does not feel like you're actually truly listening to them, then it's just, it's not going to work. And so I love Barry's approach to, to explaining how over his things, over 20 years of real estate experience, he just talks about, um, you know, some of the ways that he actually has spoken to buyers and, and they, from this ethical lead conversational standpoint. And, and, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm excited to finish it up. Good. Good stuff. That's not one I've read. So that's one of the reasons I asked that question because I'm always looking for new books to read and listen to while I'm running and stuff. So, uh, what about you? What about you? What's what's one that you're reading right now? What am I reading? I'm reading actually a pretty good book right now. It's called Scars and Stripes. Nothing to do with real estate. It's called Scars and Stripes. That's okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, if you've heard of Tim Kennedy, he was an uh, MMA fighter. Uh huh. Uh, became a Green Beret, an Army Ranger. Um, he just has a really unique story um the ups and downs of life of challenges he's had and and uh I've enjoyed his story that's a uh that's cool if it's on audible I wouldn't recommend listening to it with kids in the back seat if you ever listen to like a David <laughs> Goggins book or something like that yeah. um he definitely <laughs> uses some choice language uh but uh incredible story Tim Kennedy scars and stripes um prior to that the last book I finished before that was um it's called the comfort crisis the comfort crisis again nothing to do with real estate i read i read very diverse stuff but um it just talks about the need to get uncomfortable um you know i've talked about it in the show before like i enjoy running i run marathons ultra marathons I went to basic training at 40 I've, I've done a lot of stuff because i seek discomfort and apparently it's not an unnatural thing it talks about uh how as a society we've gotten very comfortable and it talks about it points out a lot of the things. Um, and I'll just use one example from that book. It's like air conditioning. If you're uncomfortable, you look, you look for the optimal temperature, not to be uncomfortable, right? Whether it be hot mm -hmm. or cold, that's a relatively new thing in human history, right? Like humans are used to adapting to the weather, whether it be warm or cold, like that's how we survived for hundreds or thousands of years. And the last right. say, hundred years, you know, we've learned to warm and cool homes to the perfect temperature. Right. And, uh, just like, and it goes on and on about other things, um, where we've gotten too comfortable. Right. And it just challenges the way you think about just always seeking comfort and to get uncomfortable. Yeah. And it even talks about why it's good for you. Um, yeah, that's good. Anyway, yeah. You know, it's things you don't think about. Yeah. It, that's yeah. That's a book. If you like books that challenge the way you think the comfort crisis is definitely one of those books. So yeah. So I came out with that really deep book and then got into scars and stripes, which is, uh, just a good story of Tim Kennedy's life. Um, last question I have for you, Ray, what would you consider the most dollar producing activity you do every single day? Like Hey, I'm doing this and I know this is going to feed my family day in and day out. What, what's that number one thing you do every single day? Uh, I would say uh, it's, it's going to have to be cold calling. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and the reason I say that, it, and, and just honestly, it's just, it, okay, you can split it up into two different categories. You can follow up with leads that have inquired about property. So, so you got the buyer side. Sure. <clears throat> and then, um, and then on top of that too, I, I think we should also be cold calling. Uh, I mean, um, and, uh, and, and I truly mean cold calling. I, I mean, I just I export a, uh, you know, I'll either start with absentee owners that, that, you know, they, the, the, they don't, they own a home in a different state and obviously, and, uh, I call them up and I go through a one liner and pretty much since it's a complete cold call, the only thing that I am getting uh, them to agree to is to have me, uh, do a preliminary CMA. And it, and it, I can't tell you that's, that's led into, uh, you know, currently two listing contracts and, uh, three, uh, two or three already closed listings already this year. Wow. So, uh, and then I, I got like a database of, I don't know, I want to say it's probably close to 50 people that have agreed to a CMA. Sure. And, um, and so that, so now they're always there for in my database and I can follow up with them and, um, cool story. The, the, one of the listing agreements that I just got for a home in Havelock, I actually did a cold call for a community in Taberna. I just called everyone in Taberna mm. <laughs> and, uh, I just basically, you know, went to my one liner and see if they would agree to, to sell their home, if they got the right price and it made sense to them. And, uh, they agreed to a CMA. 
And so I sent him the CMA, didn't hear anything. Six months went by. This guy called me and said, hey, Ray, uh, I don't know if you remember me. You did a CMA for me for my home in Taberna back in December. He right. goes, what? He goes, I don't want to sell my home in Taberna, but I want to sell my home in Havelock. That's it. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> and, and so I just think that's that's just it's just it's just you got to get over the hump of cold calling. And uh, and I'll be honest with you, I, I've cold called hundreds of people. And we've talked before. I, I actually wish I could cold call more because I'm trying to leverage my time, which I'm actually putting some things in place to where I can be able to constantly cold call people and from regards from a listing prospecting standpoint. But, uh, you know, I think you, you just got to get over the hump of calling people. And I've called hundreds and I've only had one person be truly mean to me. I mean, yeah. when you're calling someone about possibly selling their home, if they got the right price, it's almost like they're like, even if they don't want to, they're like, you know, I feel like when they get off the phone, they're like, yeah, someone well, possibly that wants to buy my yeah, they're like someone possibly that. wants to buy my house. And it's yeah. like, you know, they fixed her collar and they fixed her tie. It felt like they walk away, you know, their heads lifted up a little higher. They're like, yeah, this is my house. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so even if they don't want to sell, like they, you know, it's it's almost like a sense of pride. Like you're you're calling this something that they have. They feel like it's something obviously people want. And uh, even if they say no, they're really polite. Um, and I can't tell you how many people have said no. And they're like, hey, still send me your contact information. Uh, I've also had people say, Wow, so you're just calling? You're just calling to I mean ask? And they're like, well, that's pretty cool. I just like I didn't <laughs> they're like, I didn't know realtors actually did that. And yeah. so and then they're they'll, they'll literally say, Hey, just shoot me an email with your content information. I mean that way if I ever do need anything, I'll reach out to you. Right. They're so, they're a con they're a contact at that point. They're in that they're a contact at that point. And that's all and you gotta you gotta go for uh Oh, I think a problem with a lot, of, especially a lot of new agents is you got to get over that. Like when you speak, I feel like sometimes even experienced agents, right? I, I feel like when a lead comes in and I speak to them that first time and then they're they're not ready to buy or they're not ready to go look at a house and you get off the phone, you're like, and then all of a sudden you're just like a lot of agents, they're unfortunately, they're done with them. Yeah. They'll never call that person again. They call them one time. And anyway, as you know, you know, I hear many different things, but it takes, I've heard people say it takes seven touches right in touches but right more of the stories it takes way more than one i've and seen so, i've seen agents and i've even had it myself where they turn around on that phone call or they're like nah we're just looking right and i always equate it to you and i had this conversation yesterday it's like when yeah. you i've had this happen i've walked into home depot looking for batteries you know i have no idea where the heck they are in the store and, and someone comes up to me and says hey can i help you find anything i'm there with a purpose and, I'll, and it's that that normal approach to a salesperson of, no, I'm just looking, right? They put that guard up. Mm -hmm. My God, this person's trying to sell me something or I don't know this stranger, right? They put that guard up and you start talking to them and you get them to put the guard down where a lot of agents will just bail on the phone call. I always ask a question because that happened on a prospecting call, you know, type when we do calls with leadership on a weekly basis. So, you know, we'll, we'll ask them, hey, I saw you were looking over on our website, easy home search. And I'm like, no, nah, we're just we're just looking. We're not really ready to do something right now. I always flip it into, well, what kind of time frame did you guys have in mind? Mm -hmm. and, they, and they always throw a number. Hey, two, we're probably two years away or three years away. That's where you you stop being a salesperson, push that off to the side, and start talking to them about, well, what's important about three years? What do you guys have going on three years from now? And then whatever, the, then you start talking about, people will put the guard down when you give them the ability to talk about themselves and open Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Um, they get that little dopamine rush. It does. It creates a little dopamine rush. People get to talk about themselves and, and you start talking about, you know, they retire in two years and where they're from and what they do now and, you know, what they're going to miss about their neighborhood up there, whatever it is, just have that conversation. And you now all of a sudden you have more, either a better picture of what they're trying to achieve. Or I've even seen those conversations all of a sudden, we, you know what, we'll be in Myrtle beach two weeks from now. We actually, you know, if we found the right thing, all of a sudden it's, if we found the right thing, Right. And then all of a sudden you're having a different type of conversation. There's agents very early on, they'll bail on that conversation. So I couldn't agree more. Sometimes you just have to ask more questions, but yeah. going back to my original question, it all goes back to, you got to make the calls. You got to get on the phone every agent. You got to, you got to make that proactive contact somehow. And if you're an agent, listen to this and be like, Oh my God, I would never make a cold call. That scares the, the whatever out of me. Get yourself around a group. I know we do calls with leadership every single day in this office, Monday through Friday. We mm -hmm. have groups of agents that come in together and make calls together. Why? Because it's a lot easier thing to do when you're not out on an island doing it by yourself, right? Absolutely. People come into the office. We assign them different 
areas of, of different prospecting pools that are going to call from. And it's a much less scarier thing when there's a team of people doing the same thing alongside with you. So yeah. I would challenge you to find that group. If you're an agent listening to this and be like, okay, I got to get on the phone. That's my main takeaway from this, from listening to these two guys, find a group that'll do it with you. Right. We've challenged uh, Ray. We've talked about, we're going to set that up, up, up there in New Bern, right? Yeah. Yeah. The office 100%. comes in together and, and, and y'all are making calls together up there. That's why it's to get people generating business and get them past doing those scary, uncomfortable things. So yeah. I think that's I'll, I'll, I'll even give people, you mind if I give people a little nugget, like yeah. if they, if they cold Go call. Ahead. So like, yeah. listen, so if, if you're already, well, first of all, if you're not calling, then you know, get with a mentor because you got to start calling. But yeah. if you are calling and you're and you're say you're calling your database of leads, that's good. That's buyers. You want to call them. But if you've not yet dived into the uh, cold calling for, for prospecting of listings, um, it's it's uh, once you get into it, gosh, it's so fun. I mean, it's just, it's almost kind of like a, it's adrenaline rush. Absolutely. Is. Uh, when you start having those good conversations. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, it, more. I mean, and so whether you use Red X, I actually use Mojo um, mm -hmm. Dialer because I love the direct integration directly into Follow Up Boss. But sure. um, but when you call, I, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I say. And, and so basically if I was calling Travis, I already have their name. I'm like, hi, is this Travis? And they're like, they'll either say, yes, it is. Or they'll say, who is this? And, or, and I'll say like, Hey, my name is Ray. I'm a local realtor here in Newburgh, North Carolina. I'm, I'm looking for the owner of one, two, three main street. Do you happen to know the owner or, or do you happen to be the owner yourself? Everyone loves saying that they're the owner. They yeah. love it. And they always, they always go, that's me. <laughs> that's usually what I always hear. That's me. I'm the owner. And I'm like, Oh, Hey, listen, Travis. Hey, listen, you know, I hope you're having a good day. But the reason I'm calling is we actually have a quite a bit of interest in that area. And I was just curious if you were to get the right price and it made sense to you, would you possibly consider selling? That's it. Okay. And they, they either say, no, I'm, I'm good right now. Or they'll go, uh, yeah, I mean, if it was the right price, sure. And then I say, well, hey, listen, I'll tell you what I'll do for you. And I really don't mind at all. Let me put together a free report. I'm put together what's called a CMA. I'm going to get that emailed over to you. That way you can see what the probable selling price would be in today's market. Does that sound fair? And then they say, sounds fair. <laughs> and then you I get three. You, you get them to agree agree to that and you stop selling. Basically. That's, that. it. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. Because once I have their once I have their contact information and I, they have agreed to let me send them uh, a CMA uh, for their property so they can see what the probable selling price would be. Now, first of all, they also know that this is going to be a preliminary CMA because the the um I have not seen the property in person. So I'm I'm basing, I tell them. The CMA says this is based off your home being in, in, in decent condition, not having any major issues. Um, and also I'm ver verifying everything off of the GIS. So they all they all know that, but it, it, it's it's a foot in the door. It's like the door's closing and I just stuck my foot in there. And uh, obviously a handful of times already this year, short, like within two weeks, you know, they want to list and sell and then we get some that have tenants in there and so we sign listing agreements and now we're currently working on getting them out there. But, and uh, you know, a couple of quick things too, people ask and a, a big turnaround too, and you just agree to do the CMA and you're like, Hey, listen, well, cool, Travis, I'm going to put this together to CMA and we'll get it emailed over to you. You look at it. If you, if you like what you see, we can have a further conversation. If not, you, you know, I try to be funny too. If not, you don't ever have to talk to me again. <laughs> but but the, and that's true but I, once again i have their content information so i am going to follow up with them <laughs> right right and right. so and and if they say no i'm like hey listen i completely understand all, all we can do is ask right and they're like that's right that's right and they'll laugh and chuckle with me and stuff and uh, a couple of the big things too if they answer the phone and to try to de-escalate at first when you try to say hey is this travis you can hear it in the voice. They're like, what do you want or who is this yeah as soon as i hear that i always go and it works Every time I go, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was looking for the owner of 123 Main Street. I apologize. <laughs> they And then it, like clockwork, they go, oh, that, oh I'm, I'm the owner. Yeah. <laughs> and then that, now we're back on track. And then right, the, only right. other, the only other pushback they give is, um, you know, if the price was right. And they're like, well, what's the right price? And then I go, well, ultimately, Travis, that's up to you. But I tell you what I can do for you, and I don't mind at all. And so, and you lead right into it. I can't, I mean, it's it's one of the best um, you know, I'm uh, look, I, and then uh, look on a couple of them, they've been really eager and I've caught them at the right time where they've got something going on in their life. And 
got, you know, they, they'll say, Hey, listen, yeah, we're actually been thinking about selling uh, when can you come over? And so right. if, if they say that, please don't try to do still do just do the CMA <laughs> right. you get a meeting. That's, that's, <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. Not the point of that call. Absolutely. There you go. Set the appointment. You can still do preliminary CMA and just go right into the appointment. And that's that's uh not gonna happen a lot, but it it, it will happen sometimes. And so uh, but no, I, I just think that's that's one of the biggest opportunities and something we've talked about too, money income producing. Yep. Which Travis gave me a hard time before it before we uh pressed record <laughs> is uh I wasn't gonna I, do it on the episode, but yeah, go uh, ahead. But I I'll hold myself accountable, right? And yeah, so I like it. Because, um, but a couple few months ago, I started a, a YouTube channel for real estate for Newburn area. And uh, that one video, which was nothing, I mean, it was just me walking around in a, in a, in a yard. But it's, it's a so really good video, actually. It's and a so, good video. Yeah. And so, but I'm, I'm actually starting to, to produce more content. It's something that I've been wanting to do for ever since I've been in real estate. I mean, any type of content marketing, especially video, I just think that. I just think that that's going to be the future of real estate. I mean, I've already seen sure. several stories from agents who have been creating YouTube channels um, and they're they're They are still killing it. I mean, they, they have appointments set every day via zoom or call where they get text messages and emails every day yeah. of, of a buyer. Cause they, they are looked at as an authority. Um, and My then previous when episode I recorded mm -hmm. last week with Adele Gutman. She's not in real estate. She talks about uh, mm -hmm. customer experience. She moved to Charleston real uh, recently. Found her realtor through just Google search and stuff. Eventually got on uh, YouTube because he had made a bunch of videos about the Charleston area and what to expect mm -hmm. when you move here, that kind of stuff. Like totally just kind of fell in love with this person's like style of of dealing with people, and that's how she chose. She then contacted him and she said, "This is the guy that's going to sell me my house because I feel like I'm already comfortable with it, what he knows and and how he approaches people and the information that he has." So absolutely. I, yeah. And I can tell you story. I know agents in this market that are successfully using YouTube as a lead generation source. And the key to it, the key to it is, is staying consistent. It's like, that's the hard time I was giving you. Yeah. That's, that's, and that's me. Like that, you got to do me. it consistently. That's me. Yeah. And so, and so then like I was just telling Travis, I, I've, I've just got through recording some content. So I'm actually, I got a plan in place, going to be actually have a content schedule, start pushing sure. content out there. So it's, it's a little time consuming, but, it's evergreen. I mean, once it's out there and you do it right, it's always there. And um, man, I mean, I just know agents who, I know agents who moved from California to Texas, a brand new agent. And in their first year, they had 80, this, this guy had like 80 deals. Now, don't get me wrong. Last year was a crazy real estate market this, during this pandemic, but still, I mean, 80 deals came from YouTube. YouTube yeah. and that that's insane. That's insanity. And and even right now with this this in this market of what people are saying unknown or or people are worried. I mean, just video content, whether it's you video or you know like what y'all are doing with the the, the podcast here. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a podcast, but also on video as well. Yeah, so powerful. Yeah, so I mean, powerful. I have a I have a good friend in this market. His two main lead generation sources, he cold calls. The process, he does circle prospects similar to what you just described. He does that two to three days a week for listings. And his other main lead generation source is 100% YouTube. He makes two videos a week. And he puts a lot of time into it. He does a really good job. Um, Nick Pelosi, you can look him up on 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 uh, on YouTube. And awesome. Nick does a great job. He's not with, with Palms. He's not with like, Palms. Uh, he's wow. He's a, a Remax agent in the area, but he does a great job on YouTube. Not not yet, right? Not he's not with Palms yet. <laughs> he's got a he's got a great real estate business going for himself. But I can tell you the last conversation I had with him, he said YouTube's my number one lead generation source I have right now. I'm it's, telling you, dude. It's pretty it's, incredible. Uh, it, it it is oh, oh man. I, I could sit here and talk all day about it. And then I and then I and then I like kick myself because I just I've got I got one video. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the hard time. Was, and your video is good. The, the hard time I was giving Ray, and we're getting ready. To, <laughs> the hard time I was giving Ray because I was looking up some stuff uh, yesterday afternoon before we get ready to make this. Like I always do, I kind of do research, so I know what to ask people and stuff. And I was like, oh, I found Ray on YouTube, and he had one video he made. I don't know how long ago, but it was it, it has like four hundred views. He had like twenty some odd people subscribe just from one video. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, and the video is really good. It's a great video. I'm like. All right, well, let me see his other videos. And there's not another video. So before we got on, 
<laughs> and I guess, I, you know, like I said, Ray and I meet every Thursday. So we've kind of built a rapport of like yeah. talking about business stuff. And I'm like, dude, you got to make more YouTube videos. And I told him that exact story. So that's, that's where the accountability is. And Preston always say, if you know us at all, we say accountability is the highest form of love. So that was me showing Ray some love. And oh, 100%. If the, the video was terrible, I'd tell you that too. I wouldn't do it on this platform, but I'll tell you in person, like, hey, man, you got to do something a little bit different. Uh, no, I, I knew I knew it was coming. I think I knew I was going to hear from you because Josh kind of, he, uh, he 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 let the cat out of the bag. He was like, yeah, he's like, hey, talk, Travis, he looked you up on YouTube. Uh, yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, did you know Ray did one video and only got, and got 400 something views and didn't do another one? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I was, yeah, I was probably three or four cups of coffee deep yesterday afternoon. And I saw that and I probably ran down to Josh's office all amped up on uh, caffeine and like, dude, you well, know, I know. And I, look, if you're doing that, trust me, you should hear the conversations I have with myself. I'm sitting here <laughs> like, and I, I, I think there's like a couple, there's a couple comments on the video as well. Like people yeah. are like saying, I'm looking forward to more. And I'm like, okay, hey, I gotta, I gotta go. So, but yeah, you know, and I'll tell everyone if, cause if you don't, someone else eventually will. And, and there, there is no one I'm very fortunate right now that I'm starting. Cause you know, and like I said, you don't have to have, like, I've set up this YouTube studio, right? I mean, I, that's how we got started on it. Cause Travis was like, is that a zoom background? Yeah. I thought it was a, the first time I met Ray on zoom. I thought that was a fake background that you see behind <laughs> him. I didn't know it was like an actual room. It looked almost too perfect. Yeah, I know. And so, uh, you know, I've been invested in this. And then like I had told Travis, it's like I did that one video. And then from a buyer perspective, I, I just the roof caved in and I had so many buyers and I, one of my best months in real it was actually my best month in real estate Yeah, came right after I uploaded that video, which was not because of that one video. <laughs> it was just because of leads that I had been following up with. Everything just kind of fell perfectly. But yes. So uh, look, call like, like you said, that's. I love that this podcast has turned into like a mini coaching session. Look, you just don't know where it's going to go, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but people love this stuff, though. I'm yeah. telling you, people love this stuff. And plus, too, yeah, and it's look, and I agree with Travis. I think what it all comes down to is, uh, man, you you got to have you got to have accountability. Yeah, you, you yeah. really do. You got to whether the other the person that's going to hold you accountable is in real estate or not. Man, you got to have it because without accountability it's just i'm not saying you can't it's just things can go a whole lot better and things can be easier you will um, default to easier you as a human being you're hardwired to default to what is easier the only way you'll right. do what's harder is cuz you don't want to let people around you down honestly whether you yeah, no that's true workers the people holding you accountable as a human being you're hardwired to always do what's easier it's, there's like science behind it 100% right you've been an awesome guest and co-host definitely we'll do some more episodes together in the future um yeah. if somebody listens to this and maybe they have a referral for new burn maybe they live near new burn and they uh want to get a hold of you or they're an agent has questions about our our new office uh palms royalty up in new burn what's the best way for people to get a hold of you ray uh they can uh they can text me uh my number is 252-649-3081 you can also email me at r copeland at palmshome.com uh you can also you can you can find me on uh facebook as well social media uh it's, it's ray copeland dash palms realty on facebook and you can also find me on instagram as well ray j copeland so all right good stuff well guys i appreciate you listening to the process if you've enjoyed this episode make sure you click like and subscribe and have a great rest of your week have a great day and we'll talk to you soon awesome see you everyone Thank <music> you.